my name is Dawn Matthews. Welcome to this series of lessons on computer hardware. Nowadays, we take computers for granted. We find them everywhere and they're used for all kinds of different tasks. Computers have certainly changed our lives forever. But do you realize just how much computers themselves have changed over the years? This is the kind of computer you've probably seen before. It's widely used in schools, homes and offices. But there are actually many different kinds of computers which come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Nevertheless, all computers have certain things in common. In this series of lessons on computers and their hardware, we will start by looking at how much computers have changed over the years and how they continue to change. We will also investigate some of the things that all computers have in common. Finally, we will take a closer look at computer hardware. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to state some examples of how computers are used in society and identify input, processing and output as components of a computer system. Now, to understand where we're at is to understand where we've been. Imagine that, just five computers in the whole world. I think Thomas Watson was about 363 million computers short. Today you can find computers in businesses, homes, schools, shops, banks and even cars. Back in 1949, computers were huge and very, very heavy. One and a half tons was considered lightweight. <laughs> Just think about that. One and a half tons is about the same as one and a half buckies, and that was small. Today we have computers that fit into your pocket. As you can see, the computer industry has come a long way. Computers have become much smaller, more powerful and a lot faster. Computers have also become an important part of our daily lives. In fact, most of us don't go a single day without interacting with a computing device in one way or another. This makes them an integral part of the modern world. Just look around and you will see that computers are everywhere, even in places where you don't expect them. Can you think of a few places where you will find computers? Well, did you know that your cell phone is a computer? Computers check out your groceries. Computers give you money at an ATM. Computers let you communicate with people all over the world in a matter of seconds. They monitor the changes in weather. And they can even send rockets into space. It seems as if computers are simply all over the place. But how often do we actually use computers during an average day? Well, let's meet up with Archie and Salai who are out shopping and see if you can spot all the places where computers impact on their shopping experience. I don't know, do you want something else? Mm-mm, what I'm looking for is not this side. Maybe it's on the other side then. Yeah. Should we go? Cool. Okay, let's go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
Hmm, you know, Archie, I was just thinking, mm. this year we're doing IT, right? Mm. And this cash register is also a computer. Yeah, the cash is taking each of the products and swiping it over something built into the counter. Yes, Archie, it's called a barcode scanner. A barcode scanner is used to enter the price of each product into the cash register. And if you look at the monitor screen behind the cashier, you will see that when the cashier swipes the product over the barcode scanner, the price and description of the product are automatically sent into the computer and then displayed on wow, the screen. that is so quick. I mean, in some stores, the cashier still has to enter the price of each product into the cash register manually using the keypad. It's much easier to just swipe things using a barcode scanner because it's automatic and there's no chance of making a mistake. So how does a barcode scanner work? Well, have you ever noticed that every product has a little image on it? Hmm, like this. Good. This is called a barcode and it contains information about the product. Each bar has a different thickness and represents a different number from 0 to 9. Information is coded into these numbers. The first three numbers tell us in which country the product was issued. So, for example, South African products have a barcode that starts with 600. The next four numbers tell us who made the product. And the last six numbers are the specific product code assigned by the manufacturer. Because no two products have the same barcode, you can think of a barcode as a kind of electronic fingerprint. This can be used to identify a product. Now, when you swipe the barcode over a barcode scanner, the scanner reads the barcode, identifies the product, and then connects it to a name and a price stored inside the computer. That means when the barcode is scanned, the name and price of the product are entered directly into the computer. The process of entering data or instructions into the computer has a special name. Do you know what that is? Well, things are going in, so it must be something in or in something. Close, Archie. It's called input. Input is an important computer word. Every computer needs input or else it would have nothing to work with. You can input automatically, as one teller did with a barcode scanner, or manually, as you saw being done with a keypad. Input can be words, letters, numbers, barcodes or pictures. In fact, any kind of data or instructions that is entered into a computer is called input. The thing that you use to enter the data or instructions into the computer is called an input device. A device is a piece of equipment designed to do a particular job. So, in a computer, the input device is any piece of equipment that is used to enter data or instructions. Hmm, so in this case, the input device is the barcode scanner. Correct, and there are many different kinds of input devices. As you watch this lesson, keep your eyes peeled and see if you can spot some others. Once all the product information has been inputted into the computer, the computer needs to work out the total amount that Archie and Salai have to pay. To do this, the computer has to add up all the prices. The teller inputs the instruction to add everything together by pressing the total button. Now, in order to get from the individual prices to a total amount, something had to happen. This is processing. So, when the computer performs a task, solves a problem, or carries out instructions, we say it is processing. Processing is another important computer word. But what part of the computer does that? The part of the computer that does all the processing is called the Central Processing Unit, or CPU. Let's have a look at the definition of processing. Processing is where the CPU interprets and carries out instructions to perform a task or solve a problem. Okay, so I get it. Processing happens when the CPU adds up all the product prices and calculates the total. Good, Salai. Now the computer has worked out the total and it's time to pay. But how do you know how much owing. you owe? Ah, that's easy. The total amount owing is displayed on the screen so we can see it. Good. 
Whenever the result of processing is displayed in whatever form, it's called output. Output is the next important computer word you need to remember. An output device is the piece of equipment used to display the results of processing. So, in this example, the output device is the monitor screen. Yes, but there's another kind of output device that you will find at the checkout counter. Watch what happens next and see if you can spot it. Did you see the till slip? That till slip contains all the product information as well as the total amount owed. So that means the till slip is the output and the till slip printer is the output device. You have now learned three very important terms. Who would like to recap? Okay, input, processing and output. Good you too. All computers have input Processing and output. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Ah, cool. There's an ATM. I need to draw money for the movies, you know? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Drawing money from an ATM is another everyday activity. But I wonder if you realize that an ATM is also a computer. Well, watch Archie as he draws money from the ATM and see if you can spot where input, processing and output take place. First I put in my card, then I enter my secret PIN code. Do you think this is input, processing or output? Well, Archie's putting his PIN into the ATM, so that must be input. Transaction processing. And when you see transaction being processed on the screen, what is that? Well, the ATM is checking whether the PIN code and the ATM card match, so that must be processing. Good, Salai. Now the ATM has correctly matched the PIN code and the ATM card, and it displays a welcome message. Is this input, processing or output? As the computer is processing the information according to its instructions, and now it is displaying the result, it has to be output. Yes. And now Archie has told the ATM how much money he wants to draw. Watch and see how the concepts of input, processing and output continue until the transaction has been completed and Archie has his money. Did you see that when Archie chose how much money he wanted to draw, he was inputting? Transaction processing. When the ATM checked whether there was enough money in Archie's account, it was processing. When the result of the processing was displayed on the screen, it was output. So it's always input, processing and output. But did you notice that there were two kinds of output? The ATM displayed the results on the screen and also printed out a slip with all the details of the transaction. So just like with the cash register, this slip is also output. Now we can definitely say that computers affect our daily lives. So we saw that in two different situations, computers were used. Once when Archie and Salai went shopping, and again when Archie drew money from the ATM. Each time there was input, processing and output. But what about when we are using a desktop computer, like you have at school? Watch Salai as she works on a geography project on rainfall and see if you can identify where input processing and output take place. Well, here's your task for today. Write down a definition of input, processing and output. Identify input, 
processing and output in this example of computer use. We'll talk about the answers next time. Thanks for joining me for this lesson and stay tuned to this exciting series on computer hardware. For more information, don't forget to check out our website. Till next time, bye-bye.